question the other day about how to calculate the area moment of inertia of a Z-shaped beam, and I'd like to do that now. The previous video was how to calculate the area moment of inertia of a parallelogram. That's the parallelogram right there. It turns out it's not too hard, and I'll make use of that result here. So here, I made up a Z-shaped beam, and these numbers are, these dimensions are all in millimeters. So it's 200 millimeters wide. Each of the uh, uh, sections here is 50 millimeters wide. Now it's important to notice that the 50 millimeters is horizontal here. It's not measured perpendicular to the uh, uh, long face of it here. It's horizontal. So that, that makes a difference. And then the gap between the, the top and the bottom of the two uh, caps here is 150 millimeters. So if we use the parallel axis theorem, well, there's a simple equation that describes the area moment of inertia of a beam or a cross section that's made out of smaller pieces. And that looks like this. Okay, the area of total area moment of inertia is uh, the sum of a bunch of terms where every term looks like that. There's one of these for every box. And so I'm going to make sure I do this the same way I did in my notes here. I'm going to call that box one, that number two, and that number three. So this is what they call a composite beam. It's made or it's a composite section. It's made up of three simpler shapes. So I'm going to need three of these terms. D2 squared. Sorry, I'm going to have to watch the back of my head while I write this. There. Okay, so there's all three terms. So as long as I can figure out all the, the, the parts there, all the components, it's just a matter of com computing this out. Well, the first thing I need to do is start calculating um, area moments of inertia. Okay. Well, for number one and number three, they're the same, and it's just a rectangle, so it's really easy. So I1 equals I3, and that's 1 over 12 base uh, times height cubed. And we'll do this in millimeters today. So that's 1 over 12 times 200 millimeters times 50 millimeters cube that. Okay, so there we go. That's for the first two. And I've got this calculated on my sheet here. I'm not about to try to do this off the top of my head. So it's 2.083 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4. Alright, so there's I1 and I3. Now, what about I2? It's this funny parallelogram thing we got going here. How, what's the area moment of inertia for that? Well, it turns out the area moment of inertia for that is also 1 12th bh cubed. And you can go back and check the previous video where I did it a little more formally. But if you want to think of it in, in uh, just sort of intuitive ways, the, the, think of the parallel axis theorem where you have an area times a distance squared. Well, that distance is vertical, right? If I start with a rectangle and skew it that way, I haven't changed any of the vertical distances. I've only changed horizontal ones. Horizontal ones don't show up in here. So it turns out that I2 is also 1 12th bh cubed as long as you measure b horizontally. Now if you try to measure b that way, all bets are off. You're going to get the wrong answer. But this isn't too hard, so it's 1 over 12 times 50 millimeters times 150 millimeters cubed, okay? And that's going to be a pretty big number. And it turns out to be, let's see, 1.406 times 10 to the seventh millimeters to the fourth, okay? So far we've got that term, that term, and that term all figured out. Well, the areas are pretty easy. Let's see, A1. It's going to be equal to A3. It's not a very good 3. There we go. A1 time, uh, equals A3. And that's just base times height. That's easy. And so that's 200 millimeters times 50 millimeters. And that should be, what, 10,000 millimeters squared, I think. All right. And again, A2 is the same as you'd get for a rectangle that has... 50 millimeters in width and 150 millimeters in height, because again, you can think of it as a bunch of little slices, and the slices have just been skewed over. They didn't change the size of them any. So, A2 equals uh, 150 millimeters times 50 millimeters. That's a terrible X. 
and that's going to be 7,500 millimeters squared. Okay, so we're almost there. All we need now is these values of D. Well, D is the distance between the centroid of the individual box or individual shape here and the cent centroid location of the entire shape. Well, this is symmetric, so it's easy to see that the centroid for the entire shape is going to be right smack in the middle there. Okay, and let's see, I'm running out of room here. Let's see, let's make that. There we go. Okay, that's 75. And that's 50, so that ought to be 125, I think, if I did that right. The centroid of this box right here is 25 millimeters. I'll put the 125 millimeters there. And the last thing I need is that centroid right there. A, a real drafting teacher would kill me over this. I'm being pretty sloppy about this, but give me a break here. So there's 50 plus 150 is 200 plus another 25, so that should be 225. Got that, uh, those numbers all written down. Last thing I need to know is what are all the D values? Well, this one, D2, is the distance from the centroid of the middle box to the centroid of the entire shape. Well, that's going to be zero, so I don't care about that anymore. Now the other two are the distances from this point to this point. It's symmetric, so they're both going to be the same. Well, if you look at the geometry, D1 equals D3, and that equals 100 millimeters. Right? Now, it doesn't matter whether we call these positive or negative. This is the only time in your educational career you're going to be able to drop a negative sign and not worry about it. One of them's positive, one of them's negative. Doesn't matter which one you pick because we're going to square them and they're all going to be positive in the end anyway. This is the one time I get to play kind of fast and loose with uh, signs, uh, dropping minus signs. So if you plug all these numbers into there, what you're going to get out the other side is I equals, and make sure I write this down correctly, 2.182 times 10 to the 8 millimeters to the fourth. Okay, that's a really big number. Well, it's a really big number because a millimeter is about that big, and we're talking about taking millimeters to the fourth. The other way to do it is to express it in meters. Well, a meter is about that big, so this is going to be a really small number. It's going to be that divided by 10 to the third four times. And so that's going to turn out to be 2.182 times 10 to the minus four. There. Sorry, millimeters to the fourth and meters to the fourth. We got that correct now. So there you go. It turns out this is the exact same answer we'd get if instead of having that skewed uh, center web in there, it was vertical. If this had been like that and made been a familiar I beam, the calculation would be exactly the same. So that Z beam acts like an I beam. The only difference is from there to there is longer than 150 millimeters. Here to here, it's 150 millimeters. So we've skewed this. As long as you work with, uh, consider the geometry that way, it's no problem. You already know how to do it. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.